I'm generally not one to share my feelings about September 11th, share my story of where I was and my memories of that day. Um, but in reflecting on the day, um, reflecting on the last 10 years, I decided to write down my story um, and put into words, my own words, the way I felt. Um, and I felt that it was best to not only write them down, but to share them in this way. Um, I know today is an important day, no matter where you were, what you were doing, how you felt, or what you did in response. September 11th affected you. In some way it affected you. Some of us were horrified, some enraged, some utterly confused, some even at peace. Somewhere in us, though, a tear was shed that day. I shed tears that day. It was the first full week of seventh grade. The school bus full of murmurs started that Tuesday morning on an odd note. The crying driver added oddness. My first class was typing. Mrs. Woods was not at her desk, and my close friend at the time, David, upon double-clicking the Mavis Beacon icon, nonchalantly mentioned that a plane had crashed into the World Trade Center. I didn't believe him, and the conversation ended, and we teacherlessly practiced our typing, and I passed 30 words a minute that day. The buzzer signaled us to head to our next class, which for me was U.S. history. Miss Rogers was present, but she decided to forgo role in current events for a box of Kleenex for herself and a television for us. We all sat quietly, staring as our internal questions of what's happening, what does this mean, and are those people in New York City okay, grew heavier in our young minds. The CNN feed gave no comfort as a repeating cycle ingrained the questions further into our minds. Plane into the first tower, plane into the second tower, cutscene to the Pentagon, jump back to businessmen falling from 80th floor windows, first tower falls, second tower falls, repeat. The day continued in this fashion. The buzzer herded us to the next period where a missing or crying teacher was replaced with another television. We went home with the same questions, and no one could or would answer them. When my little sister Alyssa asked me what was happening, as her after-school cartoons were replaced by reporters in the traumatic cycle, I couldn't answer the eight-year-old. Our parents came home that night silent, with no answer. It has been ten years now. I am certain that since that day I have not shed a single tear, despite all that has happened as a result. At the risk of sounding calloused and insensitive, I have one thing to say to mark this occasion. I will not shed a tear today until the tears shed a decade ago. The tears of my teachers, the tears of my sister, the tears of my parents, and my own tears, all of which to this day have gone un unanswered, are accounted for and understood. What have we learned since that day? What have we accomplished? Two wars? Eight years of a weak president hiding behind the now hallowed 9-11. Thousands of soldiers dead fighting in ravaged nations against their fellow man. When has having hope meant gaining retribution? When has peace ever been won by the fear, suffering, and hate of war? When will the lies end and the comfort begin? When will equality again be won with the voices of the few instead of shot down by the anger and intolerance of the many? When will the fearful 7th graders inside all of us finally have an answer? Thank you.